All right, hello everyone. Welcome to part one of how to make an in-game shop in Game Maker. Now, this project, um, in order to make it, you actually don't need um, any objects for the items. Now, theoretically, you will have them in game, and it's just a matter of associating them with what sprite you want to use for this shop. So let's get started. First off, I just have three sprites, item one, two, and three. They're all just circles that are different colors, and they're centered in the mid middle, and I have edge filtering on just for a little bit better looks. I have a shop controller object. This is completely empty, only visible, no sprite. And I have a test room with just a background that's easier on our eyes, and we can see it. And this is just a 720p room. Now let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna open up our shop controller and add a create event as you usually would. Now here we're going to set up the shop variables. Now these are um, pretty self-explanatory, um, easy. You know, this is you can name these whatever you want, but there are a few parts in this create event that you'll have to pay important attention to. So the first variable Okay, so let me go ahead and explain these first. So the shop variable is pretty easy. Shop open is a local variable that will determine if we have the shop open or not. Global.shop is a global variable that you can retrieve to see if the shop is open, or you can also use shop open. You'll just have to call the object name and assign that variable. And then selected, this is the item that you are currently selecting with your keys, it's the item that is currently um, being previewed as well. So now we create a DS list called items. This is how we're going to store the list of items in the shop. So in order to add a item to the shop, it's very easy. Type in DS list add, enter the name of the list, which is items, and then the value. But we actually have to put in an array for these values because we want them to have a price, description, name, whatever you want. So the first uh, argument in this array or the first value we're going to put in is the name. And I'm just gonna keep this simple and name them all the same as the sprites. And trust me, you'll most likely wanna do this in the long run because it helps a lot as well. So then we'll just give it a price of 20. And then the description we can just say this is a blue circle. And then you just do the same for the rest of the items. And then we just need a simple item count to count how many items we have in the list. This is only going to be, well, this can be used for uh, your own personal way. You can just get the list of how many items are in the shop, like the value, or you can also use it which you'll have to in making the shop. And then we just get the size of items. Now we have to set up the GUI properties. Okay, so here you just have to set the display uh, GUI size and then set it to the same as your application size or your room size, whatever you're doing. You could use room for the arguments, you could use um, viewer room size it really doesn't matter but I'm just gonna make it the room size so this is 1280 by 720 and then we just have to set a few variables GUI width so these two variables are what we're going to be using to get a lot or do a lot of the math that's involved in displaying the shop in game and you don't have to worry about any uh, you don't have to worry about placing it in the right spot because this is being drawn on a GUI layer, so you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to make a menu width and a menu margin, and these are both going off of the uh, GUI width. So we're just setting menu width to be uh, basic, approximately 30% of the 
GUI width, and then we want the menu margin to be only 10% of the GUI width. So now just one last uh, variable here, and this is the preview width. And this is how wide our preview is going to be. And this is just going to be our GUI width minus our menu width plus our menu margin. And you really don't have to worry about what this means a whole lot. This is just some of the math in displaying the shop and it is all global. You don't have, this isn't based on my room size. This is based on any room size. And you can always play around with these values if you want. It's not gonna hurt anything. All right, so now our next step is going to be moving into the step event. And this is where we're going to control the shop. Now, here we're going to be opening the shop. And this is just the method for opening the shop. So here is where you'd want to check and see uh, what key the user's pressing to open the shop. So let's just use space for example. Okay, so let me just explain what's happening here real quick. It's pretty simple. So if you press the space key, this is all gonna open the shop. And if the shop is already opened and you press the escape key, this is where it's going to close it. So now it's very easy to open the shop and we're just gonna say shop open equals true. And then global.shop equals true. Now to turn it off or to get rid of the shop, it is also very simple. Set these back to false and you're good to go. Now, if you're doing a pause screen, below these you would put instance activate or instance deactivate and that will make an easy pause menu. So now, when the shop is open, uh, this is going to be for detecting if we go up or down an item. So here is where you're going to put in the key that you want to check for if uh, the player is selecting through the items. So I'm going to be using VK up and down. Those are just the up and down keys. So in here we're going to say selected plus plus. We're going to increment selected by one. And then we're going to say if selected is equal to our item count, which means if we go back, item count is the size of our list. So if we're greater than the amount of items we have in our list, or if we're equal to it, then what we're going to do is set selected to equal zero, just so that it goes back to the top or bottom of the list. So now this is also the same thing. So we could just copy this, except we're gonna say minus minus, and if this is less than zero. So if we're all the way back down to the bottom of the list, we're gonna set selected to equal our item count minus one. So this is gonna send us to the bottom of the list. This is gonna send us to the top of the list. If we go past what our selected parameters are. So now inside of this shop open, this is everything you want to happen while the shop is open. Now we're gonna buy an item. And I should also go back and just set just give ourselves some money. So we need something to go buy in order to buy an item. So now this is pretty easy. We're just gonna set up a temporary array and this is going off of our items array. And then we're just gonna say any place for selected. So this is gonna be a null area. That's whatever you want to find selected. And there we go. Okay, so now we need to set a few more temporary variables. This is the item. So this is the name of the item and that's at our first spot of the array. If you look at this array, this is just the name of the list, but we're looking at this part here, this section here. Oh, and I forgot to put 
those around the outside. You don't want these be here. You want them. After the parenthesis. Or I mean the quotation. There we go. So this is our first our, our argument. Second argument and third argument. So third is our description. Second is our price. And first is our name. So now we just need the price. Which like I said before. That is the second one in our array. Zero is the first. One's the second. So on and so forth. So now we just need to say if we buy something. So keyboard, let's just use enter for this. So this is if you buy something and all we got to do is add item to loadout slash inventory. Now temporarily I am going to use an inventory. So all you have to do is say global dot equals This is a very simple array just to show what we are using here. So to add the item to this, we just do ds list add global dot inv. And this is also a good way of checking if you already have an item in your inventory is if you keep track of it all using an, a, uh, a list. So now the value that we want to put in is just the item. The item that we bought and now we just subtract our money using our price variable and there we go we have successfully made a working shop here so now in the next video that's where i'm going to show you how to draw it all to the screen and you'll get to see your final shop so stay tuned for the next video I'll see you.